Have you ever been into an MRI? It can be long and uncomfortable to stay still for minutes. Wouldn't it be great if we could decrease the acquisition time? This is exactly the point of my research, obtaining as precise information as before, but with fewer measurements. That means less time to spend in the scanner. First, let's understand what kind of information we are trying to capture. This is an axon. This is a fiber that conducts the nerve impulses. Unlike in most parts of our body, there are many water molecules around and inside. And the MRI scanner is able to detect the movement, the diffusion of these molecules. This is what we call diffusion MRI. And since the movement of the molecules is constrained by the matter, and particularly by the axons, we are able to detect information such as the diameter of the axons or even lesions on the axons and diagnose diseases such as multiple sclerosis. The problem of this method is that this requires a lot of acquisition. Let me explain and show you what we call a diffusion gradient. A diffusion gradient is a parameter for one acquisition. This one is particularly good to detect axons with a diameter of one micrometer that are perpendicular to the red arrow. Here is another one. This one detects well axons with a diameter of two micrometers that are perpendicular to the green arrow. Yeah, I guess you got it. If we want to cover every configuration that can occur in the brain, we need a lot more acquisition. In order to understand how we can decrease the number of measurements, let's make an analogy with sound. Let's play a C chord. Thanks. Here is the signal as a function of the time. It has a value here, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of values to measure. But if we represent the signal in the frequency domain, there are only a few values that are not zeros. This is what we call a sparse signal. And these values that are not zeros correspond to the frequency of a C, an E, and a G, that are the notes of a C chord. Then, sparse signal contains the whole information about the sound and can be found using fewer measurements. In our problem, we don't have a frequency domain, but we can find a transformation that makes the signal sparse with only a few non-zero values. My objective was to find a subset of my original measurement that leads to the same sparse signal that is supposed to contain the whole information. Finally, we need fewer measurements to estimate the properties of the axon and we can make your time in the scanner sparser. <laughs>